Well, hello and uh, good evening to you, although I have to say it's good morning when I'm recording this. This is probably the lowest key start and intro to a um, Confederation of Cooperative Housing event that you've had in recent years. Uh, it's a very exciting time for cooperative and mutual housing, it's a very exciting time for cooperative businesses uh, across the UK. But I know that some of the most exciting things that are going on uh, are happening in, in Brighton and, and elsewhere. I know Leeds, uh, Dorset, some, you know, Wales, some amazing stuff that is going on. Um, and you were hoping to hear about Brighton. I'm sorry that that's not going to happen. Uh, I'm not only a, um, uh, a poor second best, but I'm not even with you, I'm afraid. Uh, the invitation came through uh, late yesterday and um, I had a commitment elsewhere. But it's a great pleasure just to um, be forced out into um, a little bit of nature to record this uh, video before uh, handing over to a film that we recorded on cooperatives for Cooperatives Fortnight, uh, which I hope you will in enjoy. Um, the Confederation uh, Cooperative Mutual Housing has a, a very special place uh, in my uh, heart, not just for the uh, energy and dynamism that I see, but also the commitment. Um, Cooperatives UK, we deal with uh, the exciting field of cooperative businesses right across the UK, so member-owned, not external investors, is the people that are closely involved in the organisation. So that may be the staff, it may be the, uh, the users, the customers, um, it may be the enterprises, the suppliers. And quite often we get the conversation about, well, you know, which one's really a cooperative? What's the purest model? And we had this in our, our recent uh, Cooperative Congress in uh, Cardiff, which took place, Nick Bliss was there, and had a thousand people over the uh, the, the weekend, and uh, one of the people that came was a, um, a farmer, uh, Clark Willis, who runs uh, uh, AF Anglia Farmers. Um, he presented just before uh, another cooperative called HF Holidays, with AF followed by HF. HF Holidays is a, um, is a travel and holiday cooperative. I highly recommend it if you want want to go kind of walking or staying for a holiday in the um, uh, in the UK. And um, Clark Willis was saying, well, you know, consumer cooperatives, which of course is the, the largest, most significant resource part of the cooperative sector in the UK, um, you're not really cooperatives in the full sense that uh, farmers are involved in cooperatives. And his words brought to mind um, the saying of... Uh, the outgoing chair of Cooperatives UK, uh, David Button, who is one of those people that you find right across the, the cooperative sector who is intensely cooperative. Uh, we, we should never think of cooperative as a noun, we should remember that it is an adjective. And David describes the um, uh, cooperatives as, uh, and membership in cooperatives as being a bit like the Great British Breakfast. Um, that, yes, you have uh, involvement of, of, of different groups, but actually membership is about participation. And he said, um, in comparison with the Great British Breakfast, that, uh, that the chicken is involved, uh, but the pig is participating. And that, there's that commitment that makes the, um, the difference. But I don't know if that's a, a perfect metaphor, but Clark Willis was saying that. He's saying that membership really matters for farmer cooperatives because it's your own resources. The more you use the cooperative, the more gain that you get financial stake is, is large and they're faced with very powerful interests in terms of uh, you know, Tesco, uh, Walmart and the like, they have to come together to make that work. The UK's got some very exam successful examples, um, HF is one, uh, Ribena is another, all of the um, black currants that get fed into Ribena uh, come from a, uh, a cooperative and they form together. Both get a better deal, it worked for the farmers, but it also worked for the company making Ribena as well. This isn't a trade-off, that cooperation actually can work uh, for, for many more people. Consumer co-ops, of course, I mean, the, um, uh, have got millions of, of, of members, some of those with a, with a one-pound stake, um, and it means different things to different people. Some get involved in the active uh, side, but others it's just, you know, it's not a lot different from, you know, being a customer and... Um, uh, having a shopping cart from from somewhere somewhere else, so membership makes a difference. But of course, you know what I said to Clark Willis was actually you know, agricultural cooperatives, for all their benefit and the beauty of the model, which has gone worldwide. Uh, three out of four farmers in Scotland, for example, now are members of, of cooperatives. So it's fast growing. 
it actually cooperative housing is is the one that is uh, I think close to my heart because you're living cooperatively. Uh, the idea of a cooperative is that you are using trade, you're using the flow of money um, to form community, to reflect community, that cooperatives generate community, but they also regenerate community over time as, as well, and I think that's what makes uh, you special. Now, it's certainly an exciting time, as I say, we've just, we seem to have a, a huge housing crisis, a huge housing uh, need that is out there but also a kind of belated recognition of the, the role of cooperative mutual models. Um, the coalition government uh, putting money aside for community-led housing. Uh, in Wales, a commitment to the um, cooperative and mutual uh, model as well. And we've just, we've got these developments, we've got community land trusts uh, emerging, the uh, co-housing schemes uh, that there's real energy behind, self-build as well. Uh, longer-standing fields such as um, uh, tenant management organisations um, and then the more genuinely cooperative end of, uh, of, of the housing association uh, world uh, and, and Rochdale Borough Housing, I was uh, with them at their AGM this year, is, is a genuine inspiring model uh, of, of working through uh, with uh, everyday people aware of the importance of housing in their lives but aware of the importance of those people for housing, for the success of the overall uh, kind of model. And, and that I think, in a world of inequality, antisocial behaviour, um, but from rich and poor, you have to say, um, I, I worry about the Bullingdon Club myself, uh, you know, is going to be more needed than, than ever. Last year was the International Year of Cooperatives, and a very special year it was as well. And I had the opportunity. Uh, not out of members' money, I have to say, to travel to Mozambique, where I visited a cooperative that I last saw six years ago, which is a cooperative on the north coast of Mozambique, um, uh, in Wimby Bay, just south of uh, Pemba, uh, in Cabo Delgado, that's probably enough information uh, in, for Mozambique for you. Uh, but I visited a, um, a crafts cooperative that was made up of uh, street sellers uh, six years ago, that in the face of police harassment to try and get them kind of off the roads and off the beaches, had formed a cooperative, uh, taken over a, a, a shop and had started trading very effectively. Six years on, they were being challenged, they still had their own challenges, um, all of the things about working in community, making it work uh, financially, were issues. They were being threatened uh, by uh, incoming um, well, both corrupt politicians and uh, corporate, uh, uh, powerful corporate uh, interests, in this case from China, to try and uh, grab the land from underneath their shop, which would have left them homeless. And they'd stood up to those, um, negotiated a deal, got a new shop, and were trading from them. It was fabulous to see them. And it reminded me of a, a, of a fable that I will close on this uh, which was about cooperation and cooperatives and it has roots in Mozambique I think, I'm pretty sure it has roots in uh, India as well I've got no, no doubt that it's got roots in, uh, in Glasgow and uh, Mahandleth as, as, as well and it's the, the fable of a, uh, a fisherman who's uh, sitting by the wharf and a financier comes by and sees the fisherman sitting there and looking around, enjoying himself, and says, why aren't you out fishing today? And the fisherman looks at him and says, well, I'm a member of a fishing cooperative, and uh, I've done my fishing uh, uh, already for today, and now others are taking their share in the work. So the financiers said, well, um, wh why don't you work um, you know, double time. And uh, Fisherman said, well, wh why would I do that? And the financier says, well, obviously, if you work double time, then you can get more income. So Fisherman says, well, why would we want to do that? And the financier says, well, with more income, you could um, uh, buy, more, buy more boats. Uh, why would we want to do that? Well, with more boats, you can hire local people and um, make more of a profit. And why would we want to do that? And the financier says, well, with more profit, uh, you could retire early. 
And the fisherman said, why would we want to do that? You can see where the story is going. And the financier said, well, with all those profits and retiring early, you could just spend your days lounging around the wharf. And the fisherman said, that is what we're doing already. And it seems to me that uh, cooperatives, we can't claim too much uh, for uh, the model, that we're special in terms of being focused on people, but we'd also create the space to do things differently, to respond to people's need rather than serve other people's greed. Uh, it creates a space for social action, it creates a, a space for community. I salute the work of the Confederation of Cooperative Housing and all involved. I salute very much the, uh, the coming together of the Mutual Housing Group to be a, a powerful voice uh, and a unified voice uh, for uh, a kind of people-centred housing in the UK. We do desperately uh, need this. So uh, I wish you well. Cooperatives UK has worked with you uh, over the last year, led, work led by John Goodman, uh, my ex-colleague and others. We're proud to have you as a member of the wider cooperative movement and we wish you very, very well for the weekend ahead.